So, acids, bases, and pH. To understand pH, we need a good understanding of water. We usually think of pure water as just lots and lots of H2O molecules. Just quickly as a side note, the number of molecules is a lot more than most people think. A standard cup of water has over 8 trillion molecules in it. Anyway, this is a good simplified way of thinking about water, but we need a slightly more accurate, but still simplified, model of water to understand pH. This is a water molecule. It has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Now, let's look at the electrons. Hydrogen atoms have one electron and oxygen atoms have eight. You can only see six in this diagram because these electrons are the ones in the outer shell. Oxygen has two in its inner shell, six in its outer shell. When these atoms are bonded as water, each hydrogen atom shares its electron with the oxygen atom and the oxygen atom shares an electron with each hydrogen atom. Now, most of the hydrogen and oxygen in water will be like this, but a very small amount, roughly 1 in 560 million water molecules, will be separated into an OH- ion and an H- ion. The concentration and activity of the hydrogen ions is what determines the pH of a solution. pH is often roughly calculated as the negative of the base 10 logarithm of the concentration of hydrogen ions. What's a base 10 logarithm? Well, it's simple. Say you want to take the base 10 logarithm of 23. The result of this logarithm would give you the answer to the question, 10 to the power of what is equal to 23? We can make a simple guess by saying that if the answer were 1, the left side of this equation would be 10, and that would be too small. But if the answer were 2, the left side of the equation would be 100, and that would be too big. If you're really nerdy like me, you might also know that the square root of 10 was once used to approximate pi, and is about 3.16, and so 10 to the power of 1.5 is 31.6, which would also be too big. From this, I would guess that the answer is about 1.3, but of course the concept I'm talking about is taking a logarithm, and doing so on a scientific calculator gives us the exact answer, which is 1.3617, etc. Now that we have that out of the way, I said that this was a rough calculation because true pH really depends on the activity of the hydrogen ions, because depending on the conditions of the solution, the hydrogen ions can be more or less available to interact with other particles. The exact formula is written as the negative of the base 10 logarithm of the activity of the hydrogen ions. You might be under the misconception that the pH scale ranges from 0 to 14. This is not the case. There is actually no limit imposed by the definition of pH. Many laboratories will have concentrated sulfuric acid, which has a pH less than 0. The strongest acid currently known is fluoroantimonic acid, which has a pH of minus 25. If you ever took chemistry in high school, you may also be under the misconception that a neutral solution is defined by a pH of 7. In fact, when I was researching for this video to check this misconception, I was very troubled to find that many sources claim that a neutral solution has a pH of 7. However, looking at a page which talks about more technical details, such as Wikipedia's article on the self-ionization constant of water, or another page I'll link to in the sidebar, you'll find that a neutral solution has equal amounts of hydronium and hydroxide ions. Now, a neutral solution does have a pH of about 7 under standard conditions. I mentioned before that a very small amount of water molecules are separated into hydrogen and hydroxide ions. The key to this variation in neutral pH is that the amount that water ionizes itself is different under different temperatures and pressures. When this amount changes, it means that the concentration of hydrogen ions is different, changing the pH according to the formula discussed earlier, but because it's just water, the concentration of hydrogen and hydroxide ions are equal, and so the solution is still neutral. Now, 
pH gives us an indication of how acidic or basic a substance is. The lower the pH value, the more acidic the solution, and the higher the pH value, the more basic the solution. When differentiating between an acid and a base, the really simple way to look at it is to say that everything with a pH less than 7 is an acid, and everything with a pH more than 7 is a base. This is somewhat tied up in the misconception that a pH of 7 defines a neutral solution, and it kind of works, but it's not correct. The modern definition used for acids and bases is called the Bronsted-Lowry definition. Under this definition, an acid is a substance which donates a hydrogen ion to another substance, and a base is a substance which accepts such a hydrogen ion. Here's an example of each. When hydrochloric acid is dissolved in solution, it separates into a hydrogen ion and a chloride ion. The hydrogen ion is then free to interact with other particles, such as a water molecule, forming a hydronium ion. In this way, hydrochloric acid donates its hydrogen ion to water, and it is generally called an acid because this is its typical behavior. It is important to notice that in this reaction, water is accepting the hydrogen ion, and this means it is behaving as a base. However, water is not usually considered a base because it is not biased towards behaving as a base, it also behaves as an acid. Remembering that a small amount of water dissociates into hydrogen and hydroxide ions, when sodium hydroxide dissolves in water, it dissociates into sodium and hydroxide ions. Surplus hydroxide ions combine with hydrogen ions from water, which means water has donated its hydrogen ion, behaving as an acid. Sodium hydroxide behaves as a base, and because this is how it almost always behaves, it is generally considered a base. I certainly plan on doing future episodes of this series, but I don't know when. Peace out, everyone.